Wednesday morning, 732. This is 88.7 FM KAZI. Good morning, y'all. You know it is time. TMG in your face. All up in your ear. It's your boy Jabari Warfield. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Got my man Dab Dub in the building. Douglas Washington in the house. Not we here. That's what it sounded like when you said all up in your face. All up in your face, sir. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Definitely here, right? <laughs> we that cousin that came to visit that ain't leaving, that just popped up. You yeah. and I just popped up. The one that want to keep borrowing money from me. Man, that dude. Yeah, I know, man. I got a, I, Do I have one of them? I don't have... Yeah, I do. They don't want to borrow money. They just want to, like... They, they want to have, like, deep, deep conversations with you when you're trying to watch the game. <laughs> you can get deep with me after the game, but not now. Right now? Right now? Right now, You want to yeah. talk about this right now? Forever? Forever? Ever? Come on, Forever, ever. man. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> Sheesh. Yeah, when the game's on, no mess with me. Don't I, I feel like that prompt that you played, I felt like she was talking to me. The views and opinions, I felt like she kind of subliminally said Dapper D. The views and opinions, because you know, you know D is cray cray. Yeah. I feel like she talking to me, man. Is it? Is it? Is, get, put your psychology hat on. Am I? Am I reading too too much into that? No, she got you. Yeah. Okay. I you. thought I thought she was coming at me. Yeah, she I got you. So. <laughs> no, actually, man, you don't get too out of control, bro. Oh, okay. You don't get too out of control. All right. No, you all right. You, you, you weren't judging me for the, the little Thanksgiving mishap pushing with the the, the mother and, and her kids for mm-hmm. the turkey last week. Man, no, no, no that's too bad. that's on that's on you. Hey, that's on you. I just don't want nobody looking at me when the court case come through and oh. you like, yeah, it's like. Okay, which which one of you black guys <laughs> <laughs> was messing with the yeah. woman but in line, yeah. you know, with well, the turkey? The good like, thing uh, I was there by myself. I was just on I was just on the line with you. This uh, is true. So if anything, you you'll have to give a statement as to to what you what, what you experienced. Mm-mm, I didn't see nothing. <laughs> what? Wait a I minute. I didn't. I literally didn't. Jabari, I was yes, giving sir. you play by play. I had my hands on that turkey first. I still didn't see nothing. Oh, man. I didn't see it. I heard it, but I didn't see it. His eyes was wide shut. My eyes said, did. <laughs> <laughs> Way wide shut, son. Man, that's the, that's the best thing. Some of the best in the hood, those are the best comments. Man, I ain't see nothing. I ain't, I ain't see, see nothing. Nothing. Nathan, nothing. Nada, nunca. I ain't see a thing, although, son. Although, what? Jabari, <laughs> what's up with the people that always end up on the news because they done seen everything? You mean like a um, you that nosy that, neighbor that always get on? Right, right, exactly. Oh, you remember that the the brother that saw the uh, it was a young lady who had been kidnapped. Right? Yep. And he would say, say he come out of McDonald's, <laughs> not McDonald's, <laughs> McDonald's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, I I bet that's gold. I bet the TV people they're like, oh, we got one of those. Man, we yes, make, put them on. We make for the best news reports. Man. I bet if a brother showed up with a suit and tie. I bet they stiff arm that dude out the way so they could get to McDonald's dude. McDonald's. Because yeah. that's the that's who we want. That's yeah, they're gonna run over us, run past us to get to <laughs> McDonald's dude. We don't want no eloquent. Mm-hmm. We want no. that dude. Yep. All energy. Exactly. All gas, no brakes. Right. To tell the story. Right. The one with the with the with the with the with the pressed out hair with the pressed out hair. <laughs> that, that well it, it looked, looked like one of the five heartbeats from about nineteen eighty five. Yeah. 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 That's, that, that's that dude. That probably dude. may have been tight in at least seven, eight months. Oh my goodness. You overdue. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Well, good morning, y'all. 7.35 here on 88.7 FM KAZI. This is the morning grind. Don't forget, follow us on KAZIFM.org and our official Instagram and our official Facebook page. Got Frederick Douglass all up in that. It's a very cool thing. Oh, man, is DJ Gennaro in the building? Oh, baby, here we go. Good morning, y'all. Yeah, man, DJ De Niro acted a fool, son. Man, he did it. He did it. He had us. DJ De Niro, if you're listening... You had us singing along in here. I, of course, sound better than Jabari. I don't know why he was singing out loud, but Boy, we hate, enjoyed it, though. The hate is real on you, ain't it? <laughs> you don't like my melodious voice? Is there a problem with my voice, sir? Well, I didn't say voice of an angel. I did not say that. <laughs> but, hey, for a singer, you're a great Zumba instructor. Thank you. Uh, you know what, man? I'm glad you're on that side of the room. Yeah, yeah. Because of uh, that's part of the reason why I do the stuff I do because I'm so <laughs> far away. I think I could get to the door before you could get over here to me. That's very true. Yeah, I'm a runner. I'm but, a runner. I'm a track star. That's cool. Plus, I got my coffee. And I don't, don't nothing disturb me and my coffee. So <laughs> don't nothing come between me and my coffee. I, I you understand. know what I mean? Yeah. All right. Cool. Cool. So I'm gonna shout out to my daughter real quick. Hey, oh. baby, how you doing? My daughter Ava's on her way to school. Go get it, baby. Get them grades. Do your thing. 
and uh, love God, serve God, keep God first. All of that good stuff, baby, because that's nothing but good stuff. All right, let's see what the traffic's up to. Right now, it looks like we've got an accident. 183 at McNeil. Look out for that. Of course, things uh, start to tighten up all over town. I'm seeing a whole lot of red up in the Round Rock area. So if you're headed that red. way, yeah, it's red, <laughs> like red, not red. Red. red, yeah, you got. <laughs> well, hey, the red, red is pretty powerful, man. When when people, I go places and people ask me, "Hey, what flavor you want?" Red, red, yeah, yeah, not, <laughs> yeah, not 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 cherry, nah. not nothing like red, nah. red Kool Aid, grape Kool Aid, yeah. orange orange drink, yeah, man, that's what's up. <laughs> it's powerful. It is very very powerful. My this word. is 88.7 FM KZI. It's the morning grind. Your boy Javari Warfield. Dab Dub in the building. Hey, man, we have a guest a little later on this morning. Right? Looking forward to it. Yep, yep, yep. We've got Lynn from Foundation Communities. She's going to give us info on uh, health insurance. and uh, Got all kinds of questions for her as well. So stick around for that. Uh, that's definitely coming up. So, so Mr. Dub. Yeah. You were talking to me earlier about some things. Give me one of them things. Man, I'm... I, I want to first start. I I, I got to ask you a question. That, okay. I got to go off script right quick. All right, cool, cool. What do you know about Ric Flair? The Nature Boy, Ric yes. Flair. Yes. Um, honest, I'm not a big fan of wrestling. Okay. I, I don't hate it. Okay. But I just don't. I just don't watch it much. But I know. Yeah, I know about Ric Flair. Okay. So I was a little curious. Ric Flair obviously was drip. He was bling before the words even. Yeah, came. Exactly. Yeah, it was. Um, he is always gonna get an invite to the cookout. Yeah, he yes. transcended. Am right. I right? Yeah, he did. Yeah. I, I think all all bros was like, hey, hey, he he could come through. He look he a little darker than the normal Ric Flair. <laughs> <laughs> I was just kind of curious. At this point, we we can't allow nobody to come for Ric Flair, right? Mm -mm, no. Paul Feinbaum, he's a SEC analyst. He's on ESPN. He got drama for Ric Flair. Talking about now that Ric Flair is making the rounds. Look, hey man, don't be jealous because he's showing up on on Sports Center. He's getting a lot of press right now. Don't come for him and say, "Oh, well, he's 77 years old." I think he's 74. Right. And he's uh he's out here. He's a washed up has been, and he's just out here trying clout chasing. He's 74. And Jabari, do you think? These big networks, these big shows are forced to bring him on? No, not at all. You ain't that's bringing planned. him on unless he's relevant. That's planned. Man, that, don't come for Ric Flair, trust bro. Trust me, that's planned. You ain't getting on, you ain't walking on no national show, even if, you know, especially in, in something like, you know, with coverage like that, with the, with the with wrestling coverage. You're not jumping on no show like that unless that's planned. And you got to pay respect. Why don't anybody want to pay respect to the OGs no more? Just let, let that man be. Thank you. We are still. The, these young rappers are still talking Ric Flair drip. Yeah. I mean, um, Stephen A. Smith just a couple weeks ago did something on live on air. He did a, an impersonation. Look, this dude is an icon. You know, came from the wrong dude, Paul Feinbaum. Yes, sir. Hey, watch don't yourself. Don't be out here in these streets. Watch yourself. Because Jabari your going to get you. You see what yeah, I did man, there? See what I did there? I'm not going to. Wait I'm, a minute. Hold you don't have my back? No, no. I, you got to take care of that. You know what, man? You got to. Hey, you. J Jabari, you, you, you could do some steps on him. I can, but I mean, you, you know, it. hey, man, if you want to invite to the cookout, you better come on with me. Okay? <laughs> I will close the door. On, I will lose. I, I will play Ray Charles, Stevie Wonder on you. I don't see it. <laughs> okay. I don't see you. So you had asked me about some other stuff. Okay. I, I was kind of curious. 512-836-2887. Uh, we have a guest, so you guys can call in. Well, we'll take that a little bit after our guest. But what is your view on whoopings? Mm -hmm. Could another way of learning have helped you? So the first question is, what's your view on whoopings? Grandma will tell you to go, your, your mama tell you to go get that switch. Yeah. yeah. You got to get that belt or yeah. whatever they can get their hands on. Or, the, or like your, Eddie Murphy said, go out that? and get the tree and, and beat you with it. So tell us about the Warfield whippings. Ooh. Yeah, they were, they were, yeah, there was, there was a couple of, oh. there were a couple of, well, you know, my pops was old school, man. My yeah. pops was old school. My mom was a little more, a little more, not lenient, but she would get in your face and let you know that you were wrong. Um, but my pops was old school, man. Yeah, I got I got woken up a couple times <laughs> after those, doing some things. Those but, are the things. Yeah. Yes, exactly. But I think what it was at the time, it was one of those things where, like, your parents would rather make sure that you don't go to jail. You know, they'd rather straighten you out than have the police straighten you out. Because if the police straighten you out, there's a very good chance that you may not make it home. You know what I'm saying? Jabari, I got a story to tell. All right. Kick it. So I was in Kmart. 
I was, let's say I was in sixth, maybe seventh grade, and I had a little fanny pack. You know, mm -hmm. when they when they, when they was big back in the youngin' days. Right. And the handheld games, those little tiger games had just come out. So I walk in with my mom and I'm like, all right, mom, I'm gonna go over here and then you over there. And so I went over to the toy section. I crick, 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 crick. You know, I looked around, but crick, crick. Uh -oh. I opened it up. I threw it in a fanny pack. Ooh. Walked back over to my mama. Loss prevention comes over. Ma'am, you and your son, you got to come to the back. Yeah. I am sweating bullets. Yeah. Now we go to the back. And the guy says, ma'am, uh, your son has stolen a tiger game. And he put it in his fanny pack. Mm. I, now, I didn't lie. Right. But... Yeah, I opened it up and there it was. Son. Look, we, we all know that Bruce Lee was quick, right? Yeah. My mama hit me so fast. <laughs> you didn't even see it coming, did I you? I did not see it coming. <laughs> there, I know people say that. And I, look, man, if you see it coming, don't say you didn't see it coming. Yeah. I did not see it coming. Right, right. She went, bam, hit me. <laughs> and then the, the guy tried to say another one, bam, she right, hit me again. Right, right, right. So the gentleman ultimately said, hey, look. I'm gonna let y'all leave. Yeah. Because ma'am, it seems like you got this in full in hand. Oh yeah. But he can never come in this store again. Yeah. Now, I, I I moved from that town and I remember I came back years later. That Kmart had gone out of business. And uh wow. but, but I, I took I took I took wifey by there and I was like, hey, <laughs> you see that's that used to be a Kmart right there? Yeah. I was banned from that store. I could never go back. <clears throat> but mama took care of it. Yeah. And yeah. I didn't want to go home. I wanted to stay there with that guy. Like I wanted him really? to give me a, a stern talking to. Yeah, he could hold me there till after the store is closed. I would have done any of that. They could make, take me to the back and make me break down boxes, but I did not want to go be, home with my it'd mom. Be good, exactly. And well, it was tough. Yeah. Well, we're gonna jump to break real quick, but before we go, yeah, I think you know, and I don't, I don't condone any of that, but I think it's just one of those things. Unfortunately, you know, for us, uh, especially me being you know old school or OG, you know, it's one of those things that happened. That's <laughs> guys, straight up eight o'clock and fifty three seconds for those of y'all who just have to be exact <laughs> there's some uh, that, that hey. means i'm 53 seconds late to work you know what because <laughs> my boss is exact exactly exactly so what did what did he, uh the, my man say in drumline you're on time if you're early you're late if you're on time hey with my military background there that is there's some truth in that son there's some people they, they'll start those briefings they'll start those meetings early yes like, wait, wait, wait a minute i mean that well that only happens to you once right yeah if it happens to you twice find a new a new line of work exactly <laughs> yeah you got to you got to get there early plus the donuts and oh you can't miss gosh. out on the donuts and coffee hey, in every meeting Come, look at me uh, okay i'm a big dude oh, okay. i'm a, i'm a eater yeah i'm a foodie man i love i know what happens in the morning it's donuts and coffee you see that a lot of people put that out there because they think it's gonna make you smile when you walk in it don't make you smile when you walk in I mean, it's like, ooh, yes. It's a relief, but it don't make you go, ooh, yes. But how I can't did you wait know we up. do that in the Army? See, I, I wanted people to allege that all we chew on is just like. st steel nails <laughs> and spikes. Right. And, and, That's what we eat for breakfast. And, and beef but if jerky. You knew that there, at some of our meetings, we may have some refreshments. Beef jerky and powdered <laughs> eggs. I think the edge would be taken off and people would be like, oh, thank yeah. you for your. Thank you for service? your service. Yeah. <laughs> was that a was that a retreat you were on? <laughs> Son, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. The beef jerky in a bag and all that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what y'all I don't know how y'all get down, but I mean I I'm oh, gonna oh, ask jerky is real. Jerky is, is almost like a currency. Really? Oh yeah. If you've got a good jerky, you got friends. Really? Yeah. It's um it, so it you don't get to eat. Like our, our, our maneuvers take so long. There's such an, an extreme amount of time that you're, you're actually doing a job. Mm -hmm. You don't have time to sit and eat a meal. That, I could tell you, I probably could count on one hand how many times we're doing maneuvers and you could sit and eat. Wow. No, that, that doesn't happen. So there's a cargo pocket. <laughs> really? <laughs> that's, you that's, your, that's your food tray. It's your cargo pocket. Really? So you have a, it's called an MRE, a meal ready to eat. Okay. You go down in it, you pull something out. It's vacuum sealed. You open it up. Maybe it's some crackers or something. Right. You scarf that. You put the trash back in your, your cargo pocket. You keep it moving. When that hunger strike, when that hunger strikes again, yeah. you go back into the cargo pocket, Son. pull something out. But if you've got beef jerky, you've got friends. Damn. Yeah. 
Yeah. The more you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, all I need is that yeah. rainbow and that star going yeah. over the head. Right now, right nobody now. is pulling out a nice little handkerchief and setting it down and pulling out their cutlery. No, 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 that doesn't happen. Boy, that is absolutely You're crazy. That is absolutely crazy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. 803 here on 88.7 FM KAZI. This is The Morning Grind. Your boy Jabari Warfield. Dab Dub in the building. Don't forget, follow us on the socials. Our social media team is so on point. The game is I'm crazy with what it. They're doing KZI 887. That's the Instagram, and of course, KZI 88.7, the voice of Austin on Facebook. You'll see the really cool Frederick Douglass mural Ooh. if you're looking for it. It is dope, man. It's yeah, really nice. It so, is. All right, we got a guest in the building, man. Oh, yeah. Who you got? Uh, well, we got Lynn Coles from Foundation Communities. It's uh, some very interesting information on health coverage. And uh, Lynn, let's see. Can you talk into that yeah. microphone and make sure? I got a, I got 18 microphone switches. <laughs> so I got to make I sure hear, I get the yeah. right one. There you go. How you doing this morning? I'm doing so well. It's so nice to be here with y'all. Thanks so much. Thank you Thanks for being for here. Now, this is yeah. going to be one one of uh, a few stops that you're going to be making with us this morning, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, All I right. feel sorry for her. Uh. <laughs> she's the one got to sit over there by you. I know. I know. I feel sorry for her because she got to deal with herself. Some, some extra pay. So again, back to the, the army, Lynn. Mm-hmm. If you are in a uh, austere environment mm-hmm. or a dangerous environment, you get hazard duty pay. Ah. Uh, I think you should renegotiate. Right. Go back and tell them. Did you guys know what you were getting me into? Mm-hmm. So you may we renegotiate. Yeah, I'll go back to the policy day. I'll go see what they do for hazard pay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna need a hazard pay deal with uh, thing one and thing two over uh-huh. there. It's going, be a, it's going to be an issue. It's going to be an issue. All right, well, tell us about Foundation Communities. Very interesting information. Yeah, yeah definitely. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm so happy to be here and uh, to be sharing info with uh, KZ audiences. Foundation Communities is uh, kind of primarily known as an affordable housing nonprofit organization. We've got over 20 residences around the Travis County area, and I think a couple in North Texas, also in, in Dallas County, that provide affordable rents for people with low or fixed incomes. Sure. And so um, if you drive around Austin, you sometimes you'll see like an apartment building that has like a big yellow sunburst outside. Um, that's most likely a foundation community's property. Oh. Each, each property has uh, a really unique community and really wonderful property managers and residents there who work together to help make sure that people there are healthy and successful and happy. Um, and so that's kind of like one of the one of the biggest programs at Foundation Communities and one of the most visible around town. But we also have what are called Prosper Centers, one in North Austin and one in South Austin. And two Prosper in those two Prosper Centers, we have Prosper programs that are available to our residents who live at our who live in our Foundation Communities properties, but also to community members at large. And so anybody in really anybody in Central Texas and some of our programs operate over the phone, uh, especially in the case of our health coverage program, anybody in Texas can call in and get access to free expert guidance connected to um, financial wellness, college and career guidance, uh, tax help for people who need some help filing their taxes. And then the program that we're focusing on right now is our health coverage program, Prosper Health Coverage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And that's because right now is the open enrollment period for federally subsidized health insurance plans for adults and for children also, depending on their family incomes, but mostly for adults who don't have health insurance from their employers. Um, So it's a really important period. And we're trying to get the word out to make sure that all of the, gosh, right now it's like Almost 11% of insurable people in Travis County don't have health insurance. So that's like over 150,000 people just in Travis County. So that's not including like surrounding counties or anything. But yeah, yeah. and so it's it's a big number of people. We're trying to get the word out and make sure that folks know if you don't have health insurance from your employer, then give us a call. We can help you see what your other options are. Very cool. Now, yeah. we've got a number here real quick, uh, 512-381-4520. That's 512-381-4520. Uh, you can also go online to prosperhealthcoverage.org. Uh, pr- some pretty interesting stats at 18% uninsured black working age adults in Texas have mm-hmm. a much higher chance of being uninsured than white community members. Um, yeah. As well, uh, you guys also offer... Um, Financial coaching, tax help, and college career guidance programs. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Tell us about that. Yeah. So um, our our financial wellness program, they have two different kind of like um, sort of – tiers of what they do. One is one-on-one coaching with community members to help them meet their financial goals. So whether it's 
saving money to buy a house, getting out of credit card debt, um, dealing with student loan debt, um, figuring out how to start a small business, right? Like whatever somebody's kind of finance related questions are, our financial coaches can meet with them for an hour, no cost. Um, people can go back as many times as they want and and deal with whatever their financial issues are. They also have a fresh start loan program so that people who are stuck in predatory payday loan cycles can actually get a loan from an established bank to pay off their payday loan and then they can pay back that bank on a slower, usually a slower rate with a more affordable interest rate. So, <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. that's gold right there. Yeah. yeah there's, there's, there, there are so many people that are just caught. Totally. And uh, yeah. I, yeah. You, you got me there. I mean, I, she, she already was reeling me in, but that in <laughs> itself, if we can get those people out of, and I and I like what you said, I, I don't think I had that, uh, that verbiage, mm -hmm. predatory. Mm-hmm. Man, that's great. Yeah, um, and it's you know it's and people they they need a loan for a car payment, right? And so yeah. and it's predatory because as soon as people get stuck with that one payday loan, then they take out another to pay for that one, yes. right? And it's because they're easy to get. The interest rates are so high. They have like there's there's no there's no credit check or anything, you know. So it's just like it it's in the it's it's very in the short term it looks attractive, but in the long term it leads people to to financial devastation in some yes. cases. Yeah. Yeah, you end up paying spending more time paying off and 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 spending more money on a loan that's mm -hmm. just it just inflates and it's yeah. absolutely crazy especially when the certain interest rate i got caught up in that once and it was yeah. not pretty because it was a very small loan but i mean the interest rate was was double digits yeah and that's really really hard to deal with because you're like man i want to pay this down right and i like and i feel like it just keeps growing somehow you yeah. know yeah um and then the other thing that our financial wellness program does is they have um classes where people can come learn some of the sort of like entry-level finance skills so why to uh, open up and use a checking or a savings account or how to make a household budget so some of those kind of like um like before you get on the path to, to meeting maybe like more complex financial goals, the sort of like the financial stability one so that people can develop those household budgets and maybe save a little bit of money um, so that they can then have a nest egg to buy a house or start a business or whatever their, whatever their financial goals are. And all of our Prosper programs are really like we used to be called community financial centers before we were called Prosper centers. And because even in the case of our health coverage program, the, the health coverage program recognizes that in order for people to have good health, people generally have to have some kind of paying organization like Medicaid or a health insurance plan or some some office, right, to help them pay for the cost of their health care. Yeah. And that's because if people don't have that office, if they have a medical emergency, if they have an injury or anything, uh, a chronic medical condition that comes up, then uh, medical debt is still the leading cause of bankruptcy in the United States. Right. And so having health insurance is also a financial necessity if people want to make sure that they can avoid medical debt. I, you know, one of the first things when I came off of active duty, Lynn, mm -hmm. uh, I had three kids, didn't pay a dime for them. Yeah. And uh, growing up, I'm a military kid, so my mm -hmm. dad always reminded me every time I got in trouble, hey, you know I had you for free, right? <laughs> <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> nice. Uh, so I, when I see my friends who have uh, hard births, mm -hmm. when they're paying tens of thousands of dollars to have children, yeah. it blows my mind. I remember I, I, I'd left active duty and I took a Fortune 500 company mm -hmm. job, and I remember my first check when I when I saw that I was like wait what like you guys are I actually have to pay for this yeah. for this healthcare so that leads me to this question I know the answer but mm -hmm. I, I want our listeners so bear yeah. with me don't uh don't don't lower your opinion of me like you already have of Jabari <laughs> <laughs> watch um, yourself never why, never why do yourself, people son. not have health insurance because yeah. it seems like it would just be something that you should have mm -hmm. so why do people not have it I feel like th like there there are reasons can you help me understand that Yes um so uh the oftentimes but when people don't have health insurance they're they're caught in what the public health community calls gaps so in the United States, we don't have um, we don't have one health program for everybody so it's not like once you're born, you qualify for some kind of like um, a program where the the local government or the state government or the federal government will help you pay for your health costs. And, and that exists in most industrialized nations across the country, not in the United States. Um, so in the United States, we have most people who have some kind of health insurance have it from their employer. It's like over 50% yeah. still. So people who work for businesses that have over 50 employees or employer, the IRS requires those employers to offer people health insurance. And that's how people have 
coverage. Um, and so, but then there's the other 50% of people who don't have a, a job that gives them health insurance. And so for those people, there are other kinds of programs. There's Medicaid for children who are under 18, um, the children's health insurance plan for children who are under 18, who maybe their families make a little bit more money than qualifies them for Medicaid. Um, and then there's programs like TRICARE, like for, for veterans yes. and for active duty folks. And then um, we have also there's Medicare for people who are over 65 or who have certain medical conditions. So there's all kinds of different stuff out there that can help people get coverage for affordable costs. Yes. But then there's like still the, you know, 30 some percent of the population who doesn't qualify for one of those programs. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about millions and millions of people here and who doesn't have an offer from their employer. And so before 2010, when the Obama administration passed the Affordable Care Act yes. for people who were self-employed, if they people were unemployed for people who had work for small businesses yes. or for folks who maybe collected a, a incomes from a collection of part-time jobs yes. for people who in those in those situations there just wasn't anything we yeah. just didn't have anything before 2014 which is when the affordable care act or the obama administration health policy turned things around and made health plans qualified health plans available for folks and so um so but still now in 2023 going into 2024 coverage years many people don't know how to apply for those health plans. They don't know how much they're going to pay for them. Uh, they don't know whether or not those plans are going to cover their doctors. And so one, one issue is just that we, we don't have a robust kind of like public knowledge or any kind of like longstanding education campaign to let people know that these programs exist. And so we, we'll, our outreach team will go into communities sometimes and they'll be like, Oh, I don't, I don't have a, I don't have a job that offers me health insurance. What else is there for me? You know, like I don't, I'm too old for Medicaid. And it's like, oh no, we, we have a program for this, but people don't know about it. Uh -huh. And then also, I mean, like for some people who have offers of employer coverage, it's just too expensive. You know? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah um, and you, so one. You don't want anybody yeah. touching that check before you get it. Right. All this is coming <laughs> out, and you're like, wait, 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 hold on. <laughs> right. Right. I thought I, I was expecting this amount to come in. Yeah. And, and and those are the decisions. I think that's when people are making those decisions and realizing. Uh -uh. Yeah, I, I'll be all right. I'm a, I'm 24. I'm 26. I, I'm normally in good health. I'm good. Mm -hmm. I didn't even get the COVID. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, I didn't so, get the COVID, so, so I'm gonna be I'm all right. Good. It's yeah. like nobody left who didn't get yeah, COVID, right? Exactly, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so as far as coverage, I mean, there's mm -hmm. there's different extensions of coverage. There's mm -hmm. could be a sore throat, it could be a dental issue, mm -hmm. uh, or it could be more more extensive. How do you guys deal with that? Yeah. So um, we get to know our clients really well. So most of our enrollment appointments last around an hour or an hour and a half, and we learn from our clients what their health needs are, what their concerns are, um, what their honestly like what their kind of personal relationship to risk prevention is some people will pay a little bit more per month to have a plan that has a lower deductible or that where it costs less to see a doctor and other people and honestly young people usually um, they'll be like no I'll, I want to pay as little as possible for month per month this yes. plan is just going to be for emergencies like in case I get hit by a bus or something you know and so we learn all of those different things about our clients and then um, also like over the course of the year we continue learning about our clients because they come back in and they say like oh it turns out I need to see a dermatologist, but I'm not really sure how to navigate my, this list of doctors that my plan covers. So how do I pick one, you know, yeah. or like I have three medications now and I'm not sure how much I have to pay for each of them. So we help people with medication management or if somebody needs to plan a surgery. So so that's all a, a long way of saying, by getting to know the people who come into our office and who work with our navigators, we really learn like what their priorities are and how they want to use health insurance because some people with high medical needs will need a much different plan than somebody, again, who's like, you know, 24 years old and getting a health insurance plan for the first time yeah. and is really just looking for like, like catastrophic injury prevention or sure. prevention from medical debt connected to catastrophic injuries. Yeah. I was just kind of curious, um, what if what if there's some are there some educational opportunities? Mm -hmm. So uh, we're making fun of the 24 year olds. So uh, it's my first job. We love 24. <laughs> yeah, it's my first job. I think I'm invincible, mm -hmm. but uh, maybe I I, I want to learn more because pe I'm hearing stuff like flexible spending programs, mm -hmm. plans. Uh, I, I, I don't know what all this stuff is. Yeah. Can, can we come in and, and get maybe a, a little education, just kind of an understanding from people? Because it sounds like these are subject matter experts who have been talking healthcare programs mm -hmm. for years. Yeah. Is, is that an option? 
A hundred percent, yes. Okay. Uh, and so we want to be open to anybody who needs any kind of guidance or advice or any any question that, that folks have or honestly like any feedback that people have about their experiences with health systems. Like we want to hear about those things and we want to make sure that our public health community is accountable to the experiences that people have, whether they're unable to find a dental program that works for them, whether, whether they went into the doctor's office for a preventive care visit that was supposed to be free and then their doctor's office charged them $15 for it or something like for preventive care on any plan that people enroll in through the, and the, the website is healthcare.gov. That's the federal health insurance marketplace. Preventive care is totally free. So if anybody gets in a plan that has, you know, even like a, if it has an $8,000 deductible or if it has a $0 deductible, that plan has free preventive care. So if somebody goes to their doctor's office for a free physical and the doctor's office says your, your copay is $10, then and and honestly, sometimes patients don't feel comfortable being like, well, my health insurance documents say that it that it's free, and so I'm I'm not really sure. And and so in those cases, it's helpful for people to talk with a navigator, even like preemptively, to say yeah. like, I'm going to go have this appointment. What's going to happen? What should I pay? What are the questions that I should ask my doctor? So not only like the general health insurance terms can we help people figure out like what the heck is a deductible? Yeah. What is coinsurance, right? Um, yeah. What's yeah. a provider directory? All those things. Um, so we want to help make sure that we can also like set people up for success before they go to the doctor. So what kinds of questions should I ask my cardiologist? Yeah. Or if I'm seeking out mental health care, what's the process for finding an appropriate mental health care professional, like a counselor, who's going to like mesh with my personality? Mm -hmm. um, so there's all kinds of things that we can do to help people like, you know, uh, identify the right doctor or do some research in advance or just I mean, literally send people away with a list of questions to ask. 512-836-2887 if you want to call in and talk to Lynn Coles. Uh, Lynn, I got to ask the question mm -hmm. for my 24-year-old homies that are out there. <laughs> they're streaming us. They're not on terrestrial radio. Yes, they are. Streaming they're all they're over streaming the world. us right now. I know, know y'all are out there. Uh, Lynn Coles, mm -hmm. why is health care so expensive even with insurance? Yeah, they, they want to know that. I know yeah. they want to know that. Yeah, no, that's a totally fair question. Um, and the 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 short answer is because healthcare is expensive, um, and that that's not helpful to anybody. Um, Healthcare is expensive for like many, many reasons that we could go into later. Yeah, um, yeah. And partly healthcare is expensive because there are so many people who are uninsured. So when uninsured people go to the hospital and then they can't pay for their you know, $30,000 appendectomy, then the hospital system and usually the taxpayer ends up footing that bill. Ah. And when the taxpayer foots the bill, then the insurance company later on has to increase their rates because the hospital charges them more. So this the whole the whole system is is based on the fact that in again, in the United States we don't have a universal health care system for mm -hmm. people because if we did a universal health care system would require the federal government to help pay for people who didn't have health insurance and costs for everybody else would go down. Um, now that said, that's at like a very kind of like broad level. Oh yeah. For individuals who have a health plan, um, health insurance is expensive for because employers can only pay for part of it. Maybe the employer doesn't have quite enough capital to pay for a big chunk of their employee health insurance right or the plans that the employee picked to help their employer or sorry the plans that the employer picked to help their employee get coverage those plans um, have higher deductibles because they cost less for the employer to purchase right um, but in general it's uh, yeah health health care in the United States is a is and I don't say this in like a snarky or like a glib way but it's it, it's broken yeah, and it's so a mess. yeah it's a mess. because yeah. of that it's really important for people to talk to local advocates who are experts to find out what the best options are for them. So even if people do have an offer of health insurance from their employer, if it's too expensive by a very specific standard that the federal government sets every year, if it's too expensive, then people might actually qualify for fi financial help to purchase the plan from the from the health insurance marketplace where people go if they don't have employer coverage right um so yeah and and the irs helps people pay for their health insurance also based on a sliding scale so people who have lower incomes tend to get more financial help to help them pay for their monthly premiums through healthcare.gov or through the marketplace yeah um Sounds good. okay yeah 
Sounds good. Well, Lynn, can you hang out with us for a little bit longer? Yeah. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Lynn Coles is in the building. Foundation Communities is uh, the, the place you want to check out. Uh, phone number is 512-381-4520. Website, prosperhealthcoverage.org. And, of course, you can always call us up here at KZI 88.7 FM at 512-836-2887 and uh, get on a, uh, maybe get on a question with Lynn. We'll take a little break and come back. This is the Morning Grind. Morning 88.7 FM KAZI. I oh, love that jam for Burner Boy, man. That is Ooh. hot. That is blazing, yeah, son. Yeah, that's a good one. That's good stuff, man. Burner Boy. Also, the uh, recent Hall of Fame inductee, Miss Chaka Khan, who is definitely worthy of that. For sure. time. Uh, yeah, man. That's kind of late. It, it, yeah, you know, mad I mean, I, late. I hate, to, I hate to complain. Mad late. But, uh, yeah. Mad, mad, mad late. So. Chaka is a jewel. Yes, she is. I'm going to yes, tell you, um, she also still looks amazing. Yes, she does. I mean, she does. It, w- whatever her age is, I don't even want to look it up. <laughs> <laughs> I could, I could do a little math in my, could, in yeah, my head here. Just a little but, bit uh, of math. She still yeah. looks great because yeah. she's still performing, isn't she? Yo, yeah, most. I definitely. thought I saw some pictures and stuff like her on stage, and I'm like, wow, she's just, she's vibrant. She's still out there. So. She is. And you know, I just found out recently. I think probably maybe a couple of years ago. Shaka Khan played drums. Uh, what? Drums, dude, like drums, drums, skills. like 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 back in the yeah, mad skills, <laughs> like back in the seventies, uh-huh. right? She she was a drummer, um, and I think she evolved. I mean, she could always sing, but I think she was just kind of a, a the consummate musician, right? She Wait, could sing. Is, isn't that just? Yeah. Well, maybe it's just me. Isn't mm. that just something that you would just hate that a person could be such a great drummer and they're an amazing singer at the same time? At the same, and they have the skill set to do it at the same time. Same. Time, yeah. son. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. All right. So, real quick, eight thirty-five here on eighty-eight point seven K A Z I. Shout out to DJ Wiz is on the check-in. Don't forget to check him out on Tuesdays from seven to ten with the Latin Freestyle, an amazing show. Really, really cool. So, DJ Wiz. Also, shout out to Miss Wiz as well. What's going on, Miss Wiz? How you doing? Uh, also, um, I just uh, got a text from my my daughter's mother, who who's also a Zumba instructor as well. Oh. And she was telling me she used to teach Zumba for foundation foundation communities yeah yeah yeah. really cool stuff and she says foundation communities is a great organization so you're getting some some love here lynn that's for sure i love it yeah Yeah. i was um i was looking at your instagram before we started today and i saw that i saw the zumba photos and i was thinking about our zumba instructors and i was like oh man i I wonder i wonder if you've ever like crossed paths with any of with any of them but you you definitely have oh i crossed (laughs) paths with this one Lynn, I gotta know though. Do you, do you have the skills to pay the bills? Can, can, oh, can, can I you, Zumba? Can oh, I groove? love I love Zumba. Okay. Yeah, I will totally nice. go to our Zumba classes. Okay. Yeah, and and a little shout out. They, they they cost nothing. Also, people can join our Zumba classes online. They can really? join in person. Yeah. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, our so health cool. initiatives team operates the Zumba classes. They do uh, food pantries and health screenings and whatnot at all of our properties. And so, uh, but they're open to the community as well. Yeah, yeah. That is absolutely yeah. amazing. Absolutely. Okay, so Lynn, um, if I'm someone who's sitting at home mm-hmm. and I don't have health care coverage and yeah. I'm feeling a little weird about yeah. contacting you guys and going in or talking to you on the phone, mm-hmm. tell me, tell me how I can I can feel better about the experience of calling you guys or dropping by or yeah. going online. Um, yeah, just kind of give me that give me that warm blanket. Yeah, that's that's such a good point because health questions and uh, health issues can be so scary, right? Like it even like thinking about the cost of a doctor's visit for people who don't have a health insurance plan or maybe any kind of program that they're part of like Medicaid or in, in you know in Travis County we have local programs like MAP, the medical access program. But if somebody doesn't have access to one of those it can just like it can be one of those moments where you feel like you you know you need to go you you know you need to go get the thing checked out but instead of moving forward you kind of move in reverse and you sort of like find you sort of like circle in or like um, like find yourself feeling even more stifled than you were before. So I think the first thing to know is that um, we are like a, a wonderfully friendly bunch. Um, we really just want to chat with people to see what their options are. We don't sell anything to anybody. We have no incentive to get people into a health plan other than for their own health and for their own financial security. And as much as I um, 
as much as I like understand the complexities of the American health system and uh, and the and the failings of it, you know, like earlier I said it was it's broken and in many ways it is. But the good thing is that there are local advocates to help people make the system work for them. And so there's that sense of like, OK, well, if I just if I just know which boxes to check, if I just know who to talk to, I can learn how to do this. Right. Like I can learn how to make this system that does have its flaws, that does have its failings work for me. Yeah. And oftentimes the only thing that folks need to do is just send, make that one phone call or drop by one of our prosper centers and just like say, you know what, I'm, I've, I'm, I'm here and I, it, oftentimes we have some coffee, there's some snacks, you know, like people can just come in and say like, I have a couple of hours, I don't have an appointment, but I'm here to just talk with a health navigator and just say like, this is where I'm at right now, this is, this is my health history or, you know, and we don't have to get into like medical details or anything, but some people want to. And so the, our, our accessibility makes us um, available to anyone uh, in any state. If people can't leave their homes, they can give us a call. Uh, they can, like, again, like if people are out and about, they can just drop by or make an appointment. And so the good, the good thing is that the the public health system does have these little pockets of like of comfort and hope. Yeah. Um, and it can be a place like the Black Men's Health Clinic. It can be a place like like Foundation Communities, but offices that are really meant to be there to to just be supportive um, and to help people access this system that granted is like is complicated, but to do it with like a guiding hand mm -hmm. and that guiding hand, once you, once you see a health navigator, sometimes like, you know, three times or four times, people are oftentimes like, Oh, cool. I know how to do this on my own now. I don't, I don't need you guys anymore. Mm -hmm. I'll come back and say, hi, I'll bring some donuts. I'll bring some coffee or whatever. Um, but then, but then also like some people just want to continue seeing us. And that is totally cool too. Yeah. Um, folks, if they, if folks want a guiding hand throughout their entire health journey, we can be there to be like, okay, this is the copay that you're going to pay when you go see this doctor. This is what this doctor's specialty is. Here's a list of questions that you should know the answer to when you leave there. And here's how you can follow up with them afterwards. So, yeah. I, oh, you got, you got one. I think we got a, I think we got a caller. Good morning, okay. caller. How you doing? Yeah, good morning. How y'all doing? It's T Bone T. How y'all doing? What's good, T? How you doing, man? He's a long time caller, Lynn. Yeah, he's a long time caller. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have I have a question, and uh, you know, y'all have something to do with housing, right, ma'am? Yeah, we Foundation Communities does have affordable housing residences. Okay, I I like to bring something up, you know, because I always hear the mayor on TV be talking about getting everybody off the street. Mm -hmm. Now. What about people that don't have a job and can't work? Do y'all have anything to do with that? Try to get people off the streets? Yeah, so we have a, we have a couple of different kind of like wings of our housing program. One of them is for people who are single adults, and one of those the other the other wing is for people who are members of families with children. And so, if somebody is uh, is living on the streets right now, if they if they've been um, if they've been without a home or without a house for a long time, or even if that's recent, then we definitely uh, recommend that folks call in and see if where where they can get on our on our wait list for uh, for one of our affordable housing locations. So so there's that wait list option. And honestly, like, you know, I, I don't know right now exactly how long the wait list takes, but mm -hmm. it's definitely a good idea for folks to get on it. Um, and then also to keep in touch with our housing navigators, because if your phone number changes or if your email changes, then you'll want to make sure that our housing navigators know that so that they, when they call you because the wait list is because you're up at the top of it, you know, you want to make sure that you get that phone call. Um, and so, yeah, so there's the waitlist option. And then we also have a children's home initiative. And so if people are even at risk of experiencing homelessness, so if people are living on the streets right now, or if they might because they're facing eviction, then those folks can, especially if they have children who are under 18 years old, like the, 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 um, the, the, what do you call it? The priority or the focus of this program is to make sure that kids don't experience homelessness because there are so many health and developmental and social issues and problems that come from that experience when kids are young or when they're under 18 years old that the Children's Home Initiative primarily works to fast track people through our housing system to make sure that kids don't experience homelessness. So, so there's a couple of different ways that people can get access to our affordable housing. There's the wait list for single residences and then we have those family properties also and then separately from those family properties the Children's Home Initiative. Does that answer your question, okay, T-Bone? No. Yeah. Okay. What, what about the senior? What about the senior citizen? 
Yeah. So senior citizens would be either in the um, in the family category if they had a spouse or in the single resident category if they didn't have a spouse. So there's no like discrimination on age. Right. You're on yeah. Your Ageism. That's yeah. That's a good yeah, question. Exactly. T-bone. Yeah, definitely. OK. Now, 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 what about the people that that can't work? Mm hmm. Now, what about them? Do y'all still assist them uh, if they can't work? Yeah, definitely. And so often if people can't work, um, then there are other programs, maybe like Social Security Disability Insurance, if people can't work because of a disability, or Supplemental Security Income, if people are older and not working um, and also have low income. So there's lots of different programs out there that can help people have some kind of income, even if they're not working. And so our housing navigators also, um, our, our Children's Home Initiative navigators actually have two years of wraparound kind of like support services to work with folks um, who are going through that initiative. But then also all of our single residence units have social workers who work in them also who can help people get connected to those different kinds of programs. So um, I, hopefully, you know, it doesn't happen all the time, but hopefully nobody doesn't have any income at all. Um, mm-hmm. and, and we've got mm-hmm. those those uh, kind of like assistance programs to make sure that people can get connected. Okay, now what is that telephone number again? I got it right here. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Yeah. All right. 512-381-4520. Okay. 4520. Yeah. Okay. 512-381-4520. Okay. Because, man, y'all said so fast, you know. I mean, if y'all slow down a little bit and you said a little bit slow. Hey, know? man. I ain't talking too fast. You just thinking too slow. Yeah. yeah. Why, you just why, listening, why you too listening too slow, slow? man. I must be all the, must be all the referees under his ear. That's I'm what in it is. slow motion. <laughs> I can't keep up. Man, I'm Speedy Gonzalez hey, man, over hey, here. Yeah. Hey, y'all have a good morning. Devin, I had a question to ask you, but uh, it's about sports, but I'll talk to you another day. Hey, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Lynn is, is quite the sports fan here. We were, oh, talking, yeah. we were talking some volleyball. Let me, let me see if oh, Jabari's volleyball. game. Yeah, Jabari, see, you want to y'all go. I'm going to give y'all five minutes and 22 <laughs> That's seconds. Okay. That's a lot. That's a lot of time. We might be a little <laughs> yeah, lot of time. Yeah, <laughs> what you got? What you got, T-Bone? But I wanted to ask you, did you see that Grambling and Southern game? Did I? I I'm, I'm a fan of the classic. It, so Grambling and Southern. Yeah, me uh-huh. too. It, it's been going on for, 20, uh, for 50 years. Oh. And going into this weekend, it was 25 to 24. So quite the rivalry. Oh, my gosh. Because yeah. sometimes you hear, oh, it's a rivalry. But it's one sided. Uh-huh. The, the whole city of New Orleans supports this um, this football game between mm-hmm. the two. It's if you haven't been to New Orleans, it's a, a walkable town, so you can walk from your hotel to the stadium, back to your hotel, and it is friendly. Hmm. So whether you're yeah. wearing Grambling colors or Southern colors, you can go to any tailgate. I walked past tailgates, and I thought we were rivals. Bitter rivals, mm-hmm. and I see Grambling and Southern jerseys hanging out, just hugging, breaking bread together. Yep. No, people, you're supposed to hate each other. <laughs> what a great time! There's a step show. The bands are amazing. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, I, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Tebow, there's, and I want step hey, shows. And, and I want to say, I want to say, if you don't like the football game, please watch the halftime yeah. show. Yes, oh, sir. Cool. Yes. Everybody go to see the halftime show, and then a lot of people leave. You know. Yes. Yeah. The halftime show is quite. It, well, it is the show. The halftime show is the halftime show is scheduled, and then they play a football game <laughs> around the halftime yeah, show. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And the football yeah. better not get in the way. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But man, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. I love it. I love that halftime show and yeah. see them ladies, them little young ladies be dancing, the, yeah. and the drum mates be backing off, yes, bending off backwards. You know. <laughs> yeah. I say, <laughs> God, no. Oh, man, I said, man, you gonna break your back, man. Yeah. God damn. Yeah, that is that is that is the exact. Those are the people we're talking about. Yeah, those are the twenty-two year olds who don't need <laughs> who the health care. Yeah, who need the health care Pull that stuff <laughs> out. But hopefully, they're listening to us here so that when they get out out of college and they get to these jobs, they can make some informed decisions. So we can wrap that all back up in there. But, but yes, sir, it's uh, it's quite the show. I'm trying to get people to go. And, and, yeah. and the people in New Orleans, Lynn, I told the story last week. Mm-hmm. I went into a barber shop. A guy was in the chair getting ready to go next mm-hmm. and he knew I was an out-of-towner town- and he let me go first. Uh-huh. And all the guys in there just wanted to talk to me and just kind of find out where I was from and yeah. just like welcome me to their town and tell me places where I need to go eat. I'm like, guys, nice. I'm only here for a couple more days you're, I, I need you another month. 16 places to go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but thank you. And then, of course, if you want the bin, vignettes, if you want to try those, mm-hmm. uh, you got to, yeah, it, it's, it's, you got to go to New Orleans. Yeah, do yeah. Trolley car. Yeah, you, 
You gotta go. The Cafe Du Monde. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Hey, she you knows. Knows. <laughs> hey, you got you got you got to go to New Orleans and eat some of that food because you gonna want to go back. Yes. Yeah. Well, yes, now I want to go to that football game. Oh, it's a show. Yeah. The, half, the halftime so show. Sorry. Yeah. Oh yeah. And and I want to I want to say one more thing. That coach for Gremlin, he don't know how to coach. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I knew that was coming. He don't know how to coach, coming. man. Ooh. What? That, well, you know what? That's why they find from the NFL because in the NFL he didn't know how to coach. <laughs> you know, but hey, man, y'all have a good morning. Good morning, thanks, thanks, T-Bone. Thanks, Take T-Bone. care, man. Uh, T-Bone, Peace to you. Don't on the guy. He already <laughs> fell from grace in the NFL. And <laughs> back in college, uh, it, it, it just I man, he, he's he's funny though. That that's a that's a that's a great opportunity um, to kind of talk about something else. Mm-hmm. So the twenty two year olds that could still. Yeah. And uh, what, what, what T-Bone is referring to is some of the drum majors, mm-hmm. they will, in their performance, uh, they will bend backwards and go all the way. Now, they're wearing a cap, mm-hmm. uh, maybe like a, like, a, like a chimney cap, a stovepipe cap. But they'll go all the way back until the top of their cap will go to the ground. Mm-hmm. And then they'll come all the way back up. Oh, That's wow. quite the back bend. Yeah. But... Lynn, mm-hmm. what happens if I never go to the doctor? I hear you seem like a nice lady. You're up <laughs> here and you're talking to, to Dapper D and Jabari and it's going good, but I'll never go to the doctor. Like, why, why am I, 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 don't, I don't feel like I understand yeah. why I need to go to the doctor. Right. Can you help that person understand why they need to pay attention to this Lynn Coles that's talking to us? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, the... The reason that people should go to the doctor just and also just like once a year, you know, um, is because the the medical conditions that we develop over time, whether it's maybe like a lower back issue for somebody who's bending all the way backwards pretty often, um, <laughs> yeah. or maybe like maybe even like a spinal issue, um, or for people who are just living their lives and are you know uh, de- depending on where they live, what they're eating, like what their genetics are, we don't know what happens in our bodies in until something manifests itself with like a with a symptom, right? And so what preventive care does is it allows people again totally f- with at, at no cost to them if people get into a health plan that is qualified and we can talk about what that word means, but if somebody gets into a good affordable health insurance plan, then the federal government through the Obama administration's Affordable Care Act requires that that plan offer them free preventive care. So it's a free physical every year. For women, it's an annual well woman visit, um, free blood pressure checks, cholesterol checks, tobacco cessation classes, nutrition counseling, uh, depression screenings. All of this is fully free on every health insurance plan through the federal health insurance marketplace and now required through most employer plans too. But a lot of people don't know it. Mm -hmm. And so if people don't go get that physical every year, maybe their kidney is showing like if, if they did get a kidney blood test, then that it would show some kind of like imbalance in their kidney functioning yes. and people would know that in advance. And medical conditions are always a hundred percent of the time more affordable to treat early than to treat later down the road. Mm-hmm. So there's that issue, right? That like medical conditions grow slowly inside of our bodies and we don't know it. So for those things that could be chronic or that could be expensive because they develop over time. And I don't even like saying this because I don't want to like, you know, like feel like you're jinxing somebody. I'm not, I'm knocking on trying to knock on wood here, but like yeah. if somebody has Jabari's a cancer diagnosis, Man, you, know? you know, what? <laughs> uh, don't start with well, me. Do not start her. with me, son. <laughs> I'm knocking on my head. Yeah. <sighs> Help her out. <laughs> right. Please continue. Lynn. But like a cancer diagnosis, for instance, yeah. you know, people don't people right. don't know that they have cancer until they're in stage four, and it's devastating for families, yeah. you know. Mm. Um, and uh, and so these health plans are meant to prevent those situations, to prevent families from tragedy, to prevent families from major medical debt, which is its own tragedy. Um, and then, of course, there's also like, and this is what we end up telling usually like most 22 or 23 years old is like. The, the average appendectomy is going to cost you 23000 to $30,000. Wow. And people get appendicitis like out of nowhere, you know? And it happens when you're 21. It happens when you're 41. It happens whenever it happens. And that's just like the one thing that happens. Like sometimes it's like a, a freak thing in people's medical histories or medical past. And they're like, oh, man, I wish I had would have had health insurance for that one, you know? Mm. Because no matter what plan somebody gets into, it will have an out-of-pocket maximum connected to it. So it'll have a maximum amount of money that people pay at any hospital in the United States if they have a life-threatening emergency or illness that pops up. 
then the health law also requires that 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 hospital is technically in network, even if that hospital is in like Florida or Idaho or Michigan or wherever. Um, If somebody has a health plan in Texas, but they have an emergency anywhere else in the United States, then their health plan has to cover them for that emergency until they're stable, you know? And so if even if people are visiting family or whatever, if they have that appendicitis, if it pops up and people need to go to the hospital, it can be it can be tens of thousands of dollars. But if folks have a health plan, they're protected by that maximum limit. Well, Mr. Warfield is rich. Uh, <clears throat> yes, I know. <laughs> I'm starting to feel Ooh, something. I will be in next Wednesday. Jabari, I got a appendectomy that's got to happen. Uh. Can I get it about ten thousand like dollars? You got a brain endectomy that needs to happen over there, man. I just thought that that was a uh, okay. So I, I know we don't have much longer. Sometimes a person may be reluctant mm-hmm. and to, reluctant to seek medical care, and even when it's routine, because you mm-hmm. said preventative, and, yeah. and I appreciate that. But that's out of the fear that. I'll be told something's wrong Mm -hmm. because you got me walking up in there, Lynn, and these doctors are just foaming at the mouth and they, they ready to give me all this bad news. Yeah. So could you help someone that's reluctant that, that is hesitant to find out? Yes. And usually it, it starts with a conversation. So, um, if talking to one of our health navigators is not the same as going to a doctor's office, yes, doctor's offices can definitely be scary. Um, they can be overwhelming. Sometimes they can be busy people. If you haven't been to a doctor's office in a long time, it can, you can feel vulnerable there or even just like, you know, the, the stress is heightened. Maybe anxiety is up a little bit. Um, but so usually a really good place to start is just by like, talking with a friendly navigator. Okay. So, so like go take little steps to get to the doctor's office, you know, don't, don't go full on. Like I'm going to, I'm going to go to a, a walk-in uh, clinic right now and, and ask for preventive care if you haven't done it in 20 years or 10 years or five or whatever. Um, but so oftentimes just talking with one of our health navigators can give people just a little bit of information to digest, take home with them, think about, and then come back, whether it's come back to your navigator and say like, okay, you know what? We talked a little bit about what kinds of programs I can get into. Now maybe let's fill out an application, right? Now maybe let's like take the next step. And then after somebody fills out an application, maybe they want to pick a health plan right then. Um, there are many health plans to pick from uh, for Travis County residents, Williamson County residents. It, it changes based on where people live, how many plans they have access to. Yeah. But either way, that process can be its own kind of information moment or like, you know, it, it, it can be daunting too. So just taking those small steps though, and then maybe like by step three or four, you're like, all right, you know what? I've been talking about my health for a little bit now with an expert. I feel kind of more comfortable about it. I think I'm ready to go to the doctor. I think I'm ready to go check out that free preventive care. And so if, yeah, I, I, we had people not to just like dive in wholeheartedly if it's been a long time but rather just like take little steps and feel comfortable with one step before you take the next one i like the sound of that coals yeah. in here look she she's been breaking it down yeah. like I, <laughs> if you were apprehensive if you're not if, if your last name isn't Warfield and you don't See, live at the look, Warfield Mansion, look, and you don't look. just walk. Jabari, Lynn, Jabari walks into the doctor's office and he's got one of those stainless steel attache cases. Uh-huh. And when he's done with the doctor, he just opens it up and takes out a band uh-huh. of money yeah. and hands it over. But and the then hands them to everybody else. We also, don't do that. Who, yeah. But for the rest of us, you have helped us out. This was cool. great. The, the views and opinions expressed <laughs> by this fool to my right are not necessarily mine. No, it's a, this is good. Yeah, this, was this, great. this is a great thing. I think we got a lot of great information. Cool. So thank you so much. I really, really, really appreciate you coming through. Yeah. And, Can uh, I close out with just a couple of deadlines? Yes, yes, okay. Please. So um, for people who are who are uh, who don't have insurance from their employers right now, or even if you do and you feel like it's too expensive, then the time when anybody who can get into a health insurance plan through the health insurance marketplace runs through January 16th of 2024. So that's the deadline for most people to get into plans. Um, If people need coverage that starts January 1st, because they have some kind of medical condition, um, or they just want a plan that lasts all of 2024, the deadline for most people is December 15th. Now, some people qualify for enrollment throughout the year. So even if you're listening to this, and, and you mean to mark it down, and you forget, we're open year round. We want to talk to people about their health and their their um, access to health care and, and like how, how to improve their health throughout the year. So those deadlines, though, are important. Um, so January 16th is when the open enrollment period closes. December 15th for most people is the deadline for them to have a January 1st coverage start date. Um, so those dates are coming. Uh, yeah, those those uh, those deadlines are coming up around the corner. So just for everybody to know. But then again, if you miss those deadlines, come talk to us anyways. We're, we're, we're here to help. And many people can enroll throughout the year as well.
That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. That is a beautiful thing. So information real quick, one more time. Grab your uh, grab a piece of paper or whatever you're writing down with. Phone number for Foundation Communities is 512-381-4520. I'm going to say it one more time slowly for T-Bone T. 512 381 Four five two zero T Bone T's taking care of uh, online prosper health coverage dot o r g is the website. Lynn, thank you very much for this. This was wonderful. Yeah, T-Bone it's T. been such a pleasure. Thanks so much, y'all. He, sure, he's no out problem. here writing down with a with a rock and a chisel. <laughs> Taking him so long to write stuff down. A piece of chalk on the sidewalk is what he's writing with. Now, I he, hope he got it that time. I hope so, too. No, he, he'll probably blame that one on the refs, too. <laughs> yes, he will. This is KZIFM Austin. We'll be back. More to come with the morning grind right here on 88.7 FM. KAZI. We're here to entertain, educate, and empower the morning grind. 88.7 FM KAZI is still on the grind. It's the morning grind. Got a collision right now at Highway 183 as you get closer to Capital Texas Highway, a.k.a. 360. Traffic's still pretty tight. Just about anywhere you go might get a little bit of relief as you're cruising uh, through the north side. Things looking pretty good there. Uh, still tightening up a little bit on Mopac, so watch out for that. South side, you know what it is. I ain't even got to tell you, but I guess I got to do anyway. Uh, all the way from the toll road into downtown, uh, stop and go. Let's up just a little bit as you get close to Riverside Drive, but not by much. It's 88.7 KAZI. This is the voice of Austin. Eighty-eight point seven FM KAZI. This is TMG, the morning grind. How you doing? It's your boy Jabari Warfield. Douglas Paul Washington, aka Dab Dub in the building. Doing it. You doing it, doing it, doing it well. Yep. Yes, sir. Sounding good, man. Having a good time. Good morning, 910. Here on 88.7 FM KAZI, the morning grind. Don't forget, check out the socials. The socials are popping. The socials are popping. Facebook, uh, KAZI 88.7, The Voice of Austin. And also our KAZI 88.7 Instagram page as well. Uh, Definitely popping. Shout out to our social media team who keeps it flowing, baby. Low in. Okay, so uh, real quick, you know, I've been, I've lived here for quite some time, my brother, you know, and um, one of the neighborhoods that's been around for a while, the St. John's neighborhood is getting a makeover, a development from a company called Graystar. Now, Graystar has got developments, huge, huge uh, housing developments all over the nation, Dallas, uh, parts of Minnesota, Chicago, etc. Well, it looks like uh, Graystar is going to have a housing complex and mixed use development where the Home Depot and Chrysler dealership are located. I know exactly where that is. Uh, it's actually near I-35, but it's going to be near the St. John's area. Um, and it looks like it could be 2025 when this one's happening. 500 more units of housing. Half those units will be for affordable housing based on individual or family income. Uh, I think to qualify, this is according to KVU.com, to qualify for 50% of the median family income, you have to make less than 41000 or less than 58000 for a family of four. Uh, some folks are with this. Some folks are not. A gentleman named LJ Joyner said, quote, I am against this because they let the realtors come in. Uh, Joyner has lived in the neighborhood for almost 50 years, said he remembers how the neighborhood used to be. And now said with the newer homes being built and with this new apartment complex, he has concerns. And I get that. And I know what his concerns are, mainly property taxes, because I know I've had to, you know, as you say, the Warfield Mansion. <laughs> yeah. See, the Warfield Mansion has it was the property taxes by 2015 when my mama was around. They weren't too bad. Right. And after she passed away, the property taxes I jumped a fool like God. they almost they almost dub almost double almost double and that was within like within three or four years man it was insane i was like oh, 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 oh my gosh yeah 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 so so we'll see how that happens and uh you know st john's has been around for a long time yeah i've run through st john's got some partners uh that you know flow through there so um yeah we'll see how that works out man um part of that area that home depot i remember that ain't nothing i mean it's just a home depot just you know and it's gone now so i could see you know it not being around but you know it's the rest of the neighborhood that probably would concern me and of course with the property taxes jumping up that's a big concern yeah because that's what happens more money more problems no doubt 
Speaking of more money, more problems. I think you got something on Mr. More Money, More Problems. <laughs> or whatever, yeah, put, yeah. Put, whatever you want to talk about. Bring well, it on, bring no, it on. I, I would like to go to Mr. More Money, More Problems. Hey, here's the question. Okay. With all of the stuff that's been coming out about Diddy, is this another dude that we ain't going to be able to listen to his music no more? Like, I know uh, a lot of people ain't, 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 they don't want to groove with the R. Kelly. And then now the Diddy now, stuff. Now Diddy, yeah. You know what? Is this about to happen too? Well, I'm not sure, man. I'm not sure. Because here's the thing about Diddy. Diddy's not really, I mean, he's he just, I think he had dropped a new new release. And he I heard did. a couple tracks from it. And it's actually, I hate to say it because I don't like Diddy, but it's actually kind of good. Yeah. It really is. Um well, Diddy's always had his fingers in music, but I think when he got away from that, you know, or didn't do it as much, I think um, he, you know, he more, you know, did the Ciroc thing and yeah. some other stuff. So, I'm, you know, I don't know that he's going to be putting music like out like R. Kelly, because R. Kelly was, you know, was was cranking out tracks all the time, uh. right? But with Diddy, I think Diddy's got his, um, he, he's got his interest in some other things business wise. So I don't think we're man, gonna hear as much. Man, you just ruined music. it for me. Okay, so sorry the, about that, let man. Me, let That's me talk I'm about this, and then I'm gonna come back to that. All right. Diddy's clothing brand, Sean John, is being phased out of Macy's after a two-decade partnership. Mm, I now, can those see. Those who don't know, um, one of his exes, uh, Cassie, was going to um, was going to sue him for thirty million, and and they settled. And because of all of that, those allegations of physical and emotional, mental abuse, uh, it was probably best that he settled that. And a lot of that stuff didn't come out, although a lot of stuff now is coming out. People are coming out of the woodwork. So it's a, it's, this is a publicity nightmare for Diddy. And this is just another one because now uh, people are, are starting to go away from him. So I was curious. I didn't even think about that. that Hey, yeah. Jabari, don't mess with the Ciroc, dog. So the Ciroc's got to go? The kind of nice, though. No, no, no. I'm not saying uh. the Ciroc's got to go. The Ciroc's kind of nice. I think what's going to happen is folks are going to do what's been happening a lot lately is as soon as somebody hears something bad about somebody, what do they do? They're like, nah, we can't associate with you, right? Cancel cultural. Yeah, yeah. I cancel mean, culture big time without... To a, to a detriment sometimes. Sure. Well, you're, you're, you're guilty until proven innocent yes. instead of being innocent until proven guilty. Um, I will say this. I've never really been a fan of this cat, man. Not even from Jump. But it's not funny. even from Jump. A lot of a lot of other artists are coming out and they're saying that. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I was a fan of the music. Um, like like one of my favorite songs of all time is "Dolly My Baby." Right. With Super Cat right. and Biggie. And I don't know why. I don't know why Puffy at that time his was his name. I didn't know why Puffy had to be on it. But, you know, he was on the track. Right, right. And, uh, I, you know, he's, he's popped up in other parts of the music. and But I can't say I was against him. Right. But, man, a lot of people are coming out. I didn't oh, know sure. you felt that way. So so what, di what didn't you like then about what, him? What I didn't like, I guess I kept seeing him being out there as as if he was like the the – I think Puff. I think Puff was uh, the thing about him is he he knows how to work the business end of the music business. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah he's got that. He's got it on lock. He knows how to do that. And I kept seeing him out here with all these. You know, he he was always he always had to be up front. Yes. Right. But you never saw any of the people that were behind the scenes doing what they were doing. He had cats like 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 Derek Angeletti, Ron Lawrence, uh Nashim Myrick, who was his engineer, um, and uh there were a few other cats that, that were basically taking tracks and producing these tracks for him and then he called himself the producer and it's like he's not a producer. Okay. Quincy Jones is a producer. Dr. Dre is a producer. Teddy Riley is a producer. You know, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis is a producer. Those guys but whenever you see those cats, those cats all of them played instruments. Yes. You know, Dre Dre did a little bit with piano, but what he didn't do is he had uh you know, if he didn't know how to play it, he'd bring in people like Scott Storch and Mailman and you know, same thing with Timberland. Timberland was is not a like a huge music guy. Yeah. But he knows how to put tracks together and he brought in this cat named uh, Nate Danger Hands and Danger Hands was working with uh, Timberland and Scott Storch was working with Timberland um, so I just I guess I just kept seeing him just being kind of just out there like you know look at me look what I'm doing yeah. and, and and the way the reason he'd get on those songs would be like yeah come on you know what that does <laughs> that gives him a writing credit yes it does 
that gives him a writing and production credit that, you know, and the artist would get no money, but he'd get a writing credit just for saying, yeah, come on, take that, take that. And it's like, come on, man. He knows how to play the music game. Yes. That's why I always yes, tell does. artists, and I'm going to Ooh, let me take a deep breath. That's why, I, you know, when, when people, when kids get into the music business or want to get into the music business, they have to know the business aspect of the music. Because if not, you will put out a hit and the person that didn't write it, you know, that you get taken. They get the money and you get to, you know, yep. you get you sitting on the corner talking about, well, uh, da, da, da. no, you got to know the music. But now I will give that brother credit. He knows the business yes, he does. of the music business. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, I think we got a caller. Good morning. Call. Oops. Nope. Sorry. Lost. Him. I was running. I was running my mouth. No, no. It, it, it happens. Uh, 512-836-2887. Call in. We're on for just you know a little bit longer. Yeah. Uh, if you want to, um, I think yeah, we, I it, think we got a call back. Okay. Hey, let's hey caller, how you doing? Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. How you doing? I'm fine. I don't get no music this morning. No love. No, you know. There you go. How about, how about, how about that? that? How about that? Uh, uh, uh. My bump. All right. There we go. Ow, ow, okay. ow. Is that all right? DL. Is that all right? How, how you living? <laughs> Hey, living well, living well this morning. Just want to give y'all a holler so y'all made it through a, a holiday. So glad y'all are back on the air today. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. How was your um, holiday? Was last holiday was good. I'm still here. No complaints. Um, you know, surviving the RVA and all the murders and things that Ooh, we got going yeah, on. Yeah, watch here. your back, sis. I'm sorry to Please hear watch that. Your back. Yeah, we done had five in the last 48 hours. Really? Golly. Ah, see yeah, that hurts me, man. At one point, y'all were the Myrtle capital of the of the nation. I remember that. You you took it from yes, DC like in those eighties or something. Right? Yeah. It was it was like during the nineties for us and it was like a murder was happening almost every day and we didn't had a brother and a sister on Monday, um, a father and a son, and then a, another person, another um, young man. You know, going on, so it's been a little uh, rough here. Wow, wow. But, oh my trying goodness. To keep, you know, good spirits and everything going on, so. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, but on, I just wanted to call in and say that um, during this, this season of thankfulness, remember again, we're going to be thankful every day, just not on um, Thanksgiving Day. Yes, yes. Cassie is a very thankful woman right now because she kept her receipt throughout these years and it has paid her well oh yes he knew yes, he knew he, he knew he he settled that joint quick right yeah that was less than right. a week i believe yep. he knew she had less than, less than 24 hours less than 24 hours after it hit the news mm. it was settled yeah yeah that's got to be a guinness book of world records i have never heard of a of anything being filed and settled in within a 24 hour turnaround the only thing you can get in a 24 hour turnaround is a fedex package sent over overseas or something that's crazy yeah 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 he he didn't want right. he didn't want to tangle with that no he, he didn't said, want that nah, smoke at all we good <laughs> right i don't and and i had to laugh about it because i'm like during the time that she was probably with him probably had one of them non-disclosure um statements and it had probably a time frame on it and she waited out yeah, exactly. And kept her mouth shut and didn't tell nobody. Yep. Until yeah. it was time to, you know, collect. Exactly. So, Let me ask you, what do you think of him as 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 an artist, as a personality? Um, I can honestly say I never bought anything of his because I thought he was a ripoff. Mm. Okay. Mm. Can you elaborate? I, I, I thought that he made his mark off of everybody else. Yeah. Like you said, he was, you know, adding his name to different things. Baby, if you ain't write it, I don't think you should get the credit for it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's my you thing. You know, right. I like Dr. Seuss, but I can't add my name to the cat in the hat. <laughs> <laughs> well put. Very well put. Yeah. I mean, it's, and I was just saying that there's, there's a, there's a business side to the music business, and that's one thing he did know is he found out how to make money by, you know, not even, not even, you know, just like saying something on the track, just, you know, just ad libs, you know, that that gave him instant writing credit and, and boom. So the artist gets the money. 
I mean, the artist gets the, you know, the, the, you know, the, the accolades, but he gets the money, you know? Right. And honestly, I think big, Biggie, Biggie Smalls and Faith Evans probably the best thing that came out of Bad Boy Records, period. I, you know, and, and just think about all that money he made and those artists did not get, you know, the same, same checks as he was getting. Exactly. Exactly. DL. So. I, I, I'm kind of curious. You guys made national news just a little north of where you're from, but I'm going a, I'm to a roll it all together and uh, say it's you. Us, <laughs> Jabari, do you remember Bruh Man from the fifth floor on Martin? Um, yeah. <laughs> and DL, do you remember Bruh Man from the fifth floor? Oh, that, that was my honey there. Okay, then. No, Stafford no. Man Chilling. breaks into neighbor's house and eats Thanksgiving leftovers. So, D.L., talk to me. A Stafford County man was arrested after police say he broke into a neighbor's house and helped himself to Thanksgiving leftovers. According to the Stafford County Sheriff's Office, two deputies responded to a home on Smith Street around 1124 on the night of Thanksgiving, <laughs> uh, November 23rd, for a report of a breaking and entering. When the deputies got to the home, the caller told them that the intruder was still in the kitchen. The deputies went into the home and discovered the intruder helping himself to the resident's Thanksgiving's leftovers from earlier that evening. The intruder, who had poured coffee grounds on some of the food he did not eat, was quickly arrested. What? Th those your peoples, DL. That's that's y'all over there in Virginia. Wow. No, 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 because I guarantee you that did not happen in my neighborhood. <laughs> well, and let it be known. First off, you went. First off, you ain't breaking in nobody's house over in my neighborhood. Because we we come in strapped. Mm. We know exactly what was in there. We was not out um, Black Friday shopping, Thursday shopping. Yeah. Because we was home watching the game on Thursday night. Mm. Wow. This guy. Yeah. We yeah. was not having that. So That's crazy, okay. though. I just, why, I just, why, I just, just... No, why they ain't got no rain camera? <laughs> Thank you. There's, there's 15 different rain cameras that available like on Amazon. You ain't got one? Right. Better yet, yeah, he done been to their house before. That's a family member. They took off the invite list, and he said, oh, no, watch this. I'm still going to auntie's house. You ain't putting me out. Man, well, <laughs> tell the truth. And he was still up in there when the cops came. Like, shouldn't you, isn't that a, a grab and run kind of scenario? You, 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 I mean, you're going to sit there, warm it up, maybe warm it up, and then eat it? Like, it, come on, man. That, it, well, it all depends on what he ate because, you know, sometimes you eat a plate, you get the itis, or sometimes you eat a plate and, you know, you got to leave uh, a deposit <laughs> before you leave the house. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes, ma'am. So, all depends on who cooked that day. But again, he's eaten at that house before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he knows. Leaving DNA all in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Jabari, oh I know what gosh. he didn't eat. Yeah. That green bean casserole. No, he did not. That sounds like oh something God. that you got on your spread. Do me? No, yeah, you, you and your people. Y'all do that green bean casserole, hey don't y'all? But you know what? I can make some green beans stand up and, t and talk to you, son. Oh, oh, Trust and believe. Oh. Everything I do is seasoned down, boy. Jeez. Trust that. Trust and believe. I'm ready for that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Y'all ain't know. Yeah. He backed me off. DL. <laughs> Well, you got anything else oh. for us before we uh we got a we're up against a break? No, no, I I I just want to give you guys some love, some laughs on the day, and uh thank y'all for just making my morning. You got it. Hey. Thank, thank you for checking in with us. We Good to hear from you. you. And we are thankful hey. that you're still on this side of the earth. Thanks for being a hey. longtime caller for us. Hey, love you guys. Talk to y'all later. All right, take care, Dio. Good one. <laughs> Yeah, man, I cannot believe that. Oh, breaking I know, into somebody's house I know. like that. I, I had to hit her with that. Ooh. I stay, I stay cocked. When I when I saw that one, I had that ready. I said, if DL call in, I gotta, I gotta give her that one. No, the those, deal. Those are her people. Oh. <laughs> That's so wrong. But, but she's right though. I mean, Stafford is like north. It's from where she's at in Richmond, Virginia. Mm -hmm. It's I don't know. It's about an hour north, forty-five right. minutes to an hour north. So right. it ain't like in her hood. But but nah, but it, bruh. That's pretty close, you, though. You breaking into... He, he's like bro man from the fifth floor. He just wanted to use the shower. God. <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to use the shower. Ah, bro man, you ate up everything? Yes, I... Yeah. yeah. And I'm about to go to mom's crib. Y'all can roll if you want to. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and give him that head nod and walk out the door. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's 88.7 FM KAZI. We're going to hit the shot. We're going to be right back. <laughs> More to come with the morning grind right here on 88.7 FM KAZI. 88.7 FM KAZI. She is definitely like, whoa. Man, top five has always been, and, and that position ain't moved. Since she came out, she was in my top five, and she never got bumped out. Man, Maya, so she's just God. God, incredible. She, she shouldn't even made that song. What she said? I'm, I, she, yeah, you woe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we like, know it. You ain't got to tell us. Whoa. I should be singing that you're woe to you. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. Mm. Fantastic. Are we ready to risk it all. Risk it. <laughs> Hey, I'm gonna pull you back. Say, nah, you, son. Be careful, to, son. Let me make a phone call. Uh-uh, hey, get... put your mama on the phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know where I'm going. Ah, yeah, I know where you're going. To, hey, look it. To be on the street is where you're going. I ain't to. never going home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Have a good life, man. That, that was oh, a good movie. That, that was, was a good movie. Yeah, it was a good movie. That's that's a good one. 9.39 here on 88.7 FM KAZI. Almost about to wrap up. Just about to wrap up. Yeah. Uh, be sure to join me later on tonight for Jazz and Other Vibes. Uh, got some great stuff for you between 7 and 10 p.m. Uh, saxophonist Joyce Spencer. Got some music from her. She was just in town uh, with Women in Jazz, the Austin Women in Jazz Festival. Drummer J-Rod Sullivan. Got some stuff from him to share with you. And... I'm going to be playing music as well from Usher and T-Pain Ooh. on the jazz show. That's going to, it's going to be them other vibes that we're talking about. What? Yeah, I'm going to feature that. So that's going to be pretty interesting stuff. So Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're just about to wrap up. What's going on, man? Man, I was curious. Jabari. Yes, sir. And listeners, 512-836-2887. I got to know, people. Would you rather know when you're going to die or how you're going to die? Ooh, see, wow. I got to know. 512-836-2887. Yeah, we have to make that a quick one, but so, yeah. So, Jabari, what say you, sir? When or how? Yes. Um, I think I'd rather know when, if I had to know. Uh-huh. I think I'd rather know when because I think at that point I could be like, okay, I got some things I got to do. I got to go to the Maldives and <laughs> and chill out in one of them over the water bungalows. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got to hook up with Maya, hang out with Maya for a while. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You're assuming that Maya is eligible. You know, I got that on lot. This is, well, you know what, man? Maya, Maya's, you know, Maya got time. You know, <laughs> she got time. She'll say, Doug, well, you know, exactly. he is uh, he is on his dying day. Exactly, exactly. <sighs> um, I probably want to know when. That way I I would say, okay, cool. You know, I get this done, get that done. You know, because uh, I think it, it, there was a lot of time, especially now, there's a lot of time, in, even now in my life, where I'm like, ah, I get that done later on, I get that done. And time is one of those things that is very precious that you really don't have. Like I said, I had a, a cousin who passed away at 16 and I had a grandmother passed away at 93. So time is just one of those things you just don't know you have a lot of. It's just not promised. But Jabari, on that day when you find out, let's say, let's just say you making your rounds mm-hmm. and you're you, like, you want to visit family or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what if like, I don't know, a piano, <laughs> a piano I'm drops out Wally the sky Coyote, and hits on my head. Yeah. But, but, but what something, me pianos? something <laughs> graphic happens in front of while you're doing it. See, you don't know how you're going to die on that day. You just know it's that day. Right. So kind of, you kind of need to like shelter yourself, right? Right. You don't know when it's going to happen. Almost like, what was that movie? Uh, uh, it was the movie where, where you, they, those guys cheated death. And because mm. they cheated it, death was like, oh, I'm still going to get you. Right. And that, yeah, I can't even remember the movie, but that's, that's where I'm just saying then. It, yeah. I'm just, I'm just asking. I mean, you made your decision, but I'm just kind of curious. You're not worried about on that day. You don't Man, know you how know it's going to happen. What if I you're in the don't... middle of talking to somebody and you just like croak out? This well, you know what that could happen. I've seen that happen. And now you don't scarred those people. Right, this is true. But like I said, you know, with all the stuff I've been doing, anybody who knows me knows I've I've been into some things. I've done some things. I've been hung out till six six o'clock in the morning. Yeah. You know, doing all kinds of craziness. You know, um, I put myself in some you know pretty pretty 
pretty dangerous and precarious positions. Yeah. Um, and thank the good Lord above, man. I am still here. Um, I think I'm here, you know, be, partly because my daughter's here. You know, that's she got to have, you know, daddy around and all that. So, I, you know, I can't say, you know, for sure. I just know that. You know, it's just you just have to keep on stepping forward. You know, one day at a time, one life at a time, one you know, one uh, one <laughs> one one crazy you know incident at a time. You know what I mean? Um, that's all we can do. Do you yeah. think people would use that power for evil if you know when? Because you're you're invincible up until that point. Yeah, exactly. Like nothing, you're limitless. Nothing exactly. can stop you. And you're you're out here living with reckless abandon. Yeah, if you, you know it ain't my time. If you black, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you black, you gonna get caught. Go, okay, I know you got two days, but we finna we finna take you to court. You gonna be and, locked yeah, up. Exactly, exactly. These final two days to be in the Hooskow. Yes, right, sir. Right next to Bruh Man for yeah, the fifth floor. For the fifth floor. Out there with DL from RVA. Right, exactly. <laughs> Want to use your shower. Want to use your shower. Hey child. man, you gonna finish that that, that chili you exactly. got over there? Yeah, exactly. Give me that Sam. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, that's that's the deal, man. All right, we're getting ready to wrap up. The professor's coming up in just a little bit. Uh, be sure to check out Iron Sharpens Iron later on today as well. Uh, also, DJ Slice is gonna be in the mix for the afternoon. Uh, check out my man Johnny Garrett. He's gonna be doing his thing in court later on tonight 7 to 10 join me for jazz and other vibes any last words my brother man i just want to say that those people if you're going through any kind of abuse mental physical emotional don't wait don't wait i i i allege i'm not victim blaming but i would have liked for cassie to have gotten out of that situation earlier i don't know all yeah. the instances i don't know all the background details but i i hate that some people they hang in there way too long and we hear about it after the fact so know your worth know your value and get out there are plenty other fish in the sea uh maya if you're in something bad <laughs> girl i'm here for you get out of what you in and you can come and I'll be your friend. Ooh, yes, man. Well, you may have to take a number. That's no, for sure. What? Those are good words, though, man. I'm not going to front. Those yeah. are really good words. I'll say that uh, one of the things I do, one of, I'm, I'm getting ready to deal with something that I, I didn't want to deal with, which is um, dealing with a legal issue with a family member. Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't want to do it, but I got to. Yeah. Right? And so I would say to this one, in, in, say this, anybody who has uh, parents who are still around, and if you have property, if you have, you know, finances and all of that, try to get all of that, all your affairs in order, man. Yep. I, like I said, it's one of those things, you know, when my mom passed, I had to deal with some things and I've got to do something that I'm not necessarily comfortable with doing, but it's got to get done. And unfortunately, it involves someone that I know, someone I love, um, but uh, but it's got to get done. And I would say for those of you, you know, who 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 like to plan ahead seriously get your affairs in order and find out exactly what it, your role is going to be uh after your folks check out and unfortunately it's not a great subject to talk about but it's real and uh you know if if, if we're being real if we want to be real then unfortunately that's uh, one of the things we got to deal with i will see you guys later on tonight for jazz another vibe 7 to 10 p.m my man douglas Dap Dub, we're going to yep. be doing uh, Fans View Friday, 10 to noon. Check him out there. Sports View, sports talk, baby. We got it right here on 88.7 FM KAZI. We on the grind.